that. Yeah. It's a very, very happy coincidence. Yes. So we're delighted to have you. But let me ask you something, Elijah. Maybe we can start from there. Um, there's, there was a time when anything APC, Tinumbu, APC and Tinumbu, and just the APC family, Tinumbu is just one part of it, but the APC family, you were very, very much in evidence. Uh, and uh, people seem to have noticed that in this time, we've not seen Alaji Lai Muhammad uh, as much as we used to see him, as for instance, before uh, this administration came to power. Uh, maybe when you were, quote unquote, in the trenches, we were seeing you very, very frequently. And so people are wondering, now that, well, we're, we're, we're back there, uh, 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 you know, uh, he's striving to be the president. Why have we not seen some of those reliable APC names that we used to know? Uh, first of all, will you accept the charge that you've been, quote unquote, missing in action a bit when it comes to Tinubu's uh, quest? So, Polari, uh, that's quite unfair and it's very untrue. I've uh, been missing action when it comes to APC's campaign or especially uh, my mentor's uh, quest for presidency. That's not very correct. It's not correct at all. Um, number one, there are many ways to skin a cat. Okay. And um, there are many ways you can support a campaign. Uh, you either be there physically, you could also contribute. Financially, you could also, uh, you know, be in the think tank. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, with all sense of uh, humility, I've been there. Okay. Uh, physically, I came back from Abekuta, sorry, from Ibadan only yesterday. And uh, as a matter of fact, I had to take an Okada from the <laughs> hall to the airport. <laughs> what my, did you do with the Babashiga? With my you would AD, have been billowing like a parachute with behind my you. AD, with my ADC, <laughs> but it was the only way we could um, make, make the flight. <laughs> okay. Uh, but even before then, I was also in Lagos for the rally. I was in Katsina for the rally. I was in Lafayette for the rally. I was in Lauren for the rally. Okay, so you've been there, but so, the other thing to say is that Again, we've always known you as a, a front row kind of person. So if you were there, but maybe for me to have made this mistake and you having to check me, for which I am grateful, that no, 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 on the contrary, I've been there. I about, think, about yes. Mr. President. Yes, but, 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 In fact, some newspapers actually said that Mr. President has been reluctant to come out and well, openly I, I, I think, support. I, I think I'll come to that. Yes. Well, I will say again with all sense of humility that I've devoted the last three months plus to complementing the campaign of the presidential candidate of the APC. Okay. I introduced the PMB scorecard series, which is a platform whereby every minister comes to address bureau chiefs, editors, correspondents, on his stewardship in the last eight years of works, in, in, in works. These are how many roads we built, these are how many bridges we built, railway. And to the glory of God, between October 18 and last Tuesday, 25 ministers have given their scorecards. And what is quite significant about this? Uh, platform is that before we started this scorecard series, the opposition's refrain was that this government and APC, and by extension, Ashwaja Balatinubu, they are planning to campaign with. They've been in power for eight years, and yet they are planning to campaign with. They have nothing to campaign with. Yes. No, but when so we such came, was the allegation. Yes, but when we came with this pro program, it was clear that we even have what you call Umbara Lushua. In other words, we have too many things to campaign with. And that has changed the narrative. And what is, again, unique about the podcast series is that it's a four-layered 
approach to broadcasting. It's a four layer approach to propagating what you have done. Mm -hmm. First, every day, and you see, we, we, we had, normally we have three scorecards in a week. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when there's no Federal Reserve Council meeting, we also have on Wednesdays. And that's why we're able to hold 25, 326, because this 26 one was for the National you know, Publishing Council, Council. We'll come to that later. Now, I say it's a four-layer approach uh, to by NTA, by FRCN, by Voice of Nigeria, and also stream live okay. by the social media handle of the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. That's the first layer. The second layer is that because we invite bureau chiefs, editors, and correspondents, they also go back to report the same you know, scorecard. The third layer is what we call this e byte where we break down into small bytes and we share by social media okay. and WhatsApp the quotations and the highlights of that uh, presentation. And lastly, we also now take time to buy airtime and show the same presentation again on private media. Okay. Okay. Such as TVC, mm -hmm. AIT, and Channel. And this is what has made this to go down, you know, to as many people as possible. So in my own way, mm. three times a week, I'm campaigning. Okay. But people are media. not hearing the name of Tinumbu in all of that. This is, again, no, 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 rightly... No, no. Wait, sir. Yes. Let me sort of explain myself. Um, this is the scorecard of the incumbent administration. Right. And there's rightly so. You are a minister of the Federal Republic, a sworn minister. So there are, you know, like anybody. But, you know, as we said, the season is the political season. It is the president is a member of APC. So there's that sense in which I take everything that you've said as it, it has to be benefiting whoever is coming along as long as it's an APC person. So I imagine that even uh, will be benefiting from that, which I think is what you're saying. But I wanted to get to the point of selling your candidate. And that's why I made the charge that there are people, they might not know enough about it, that are saying that even Mr. President was reluctant until very, very recently See, to Mr. come on Mr. and sell yeah. the candidature. But uh, after that, we've heard that we are lucky to have him. We, no, we're lucky to have no, him, you know, representing our party. No, 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 sir. No, sir. Mr. Polari, number one, the major beneficiary of the scorecard is the incoming president by the grace of God. That is Ashwani Bola Medjinobo. Okay. Why? Because while he's not running. Exactly. So two people running. are the major beneficiaries of this scorecard series, the party and its candidates. Okay, because we have to take everything back to the party. Exactly, because the the the, the, the Tinubu is not an independent candidate; he's running on the platform of APC. And people will say your party has been in power for eight years. What have they done? Why must we vote for you? Therefore. The direct beneficiary of the scorecard series okay. is Ashwani Bola Ahmed Tinubu, because we yeah. are saying that his party that has been in power for eight years has done so much. Therefore, you must vote for him so that he can consolidate on what they have, they have done. Now, two, the scorecard series is, has, has also given us a platform to address and debunk certain allegations against both the government and this candidate by the opposition. Okay. And I can sit mm -hmm. here and tell you about mm -hmm. three, four examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I get that. Right. Now, your allegation, or rather not your actually, or rather that impression out there that the president is a reluctant 
campaigner. Campaigner for what? For what but I think it's, again, very untrue and very unfair. Let's start from the beginning. Mr. President sat all through the national convention that produced Shrebala Mechinobo. He left about two or three in the morning and came back to join us until he was pronounced the candidate of the party. Or any member of APC or any member of this government not to support Ashwagwalamet to win his quest for presidency. Okay. Because we will be the first victims. Well, it is good you put it, you, 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 you've explained it like this, Alaji. Why I say that, you know, people are so passionate about current affairs in this country. And there was a time, especially during the time that you're citing now, uh, when the APC convention was a virtual. We just, we, just, we just didn't know what was going on there. It seemed that all sorts of dramas, intrigues were going on. It was felt that the powers that be in the party didn't want somebody, wanted somebody else, and all of that. But all's well that ended well. At the end of the day, Ashwaj Bala Tinubu emerged. But then, look at where we are nowadays when people are making all sorts of uh, you, you see people, insinuations you, you see, from what is going on. In politics, conspiracy theories and all kinds of armchair analysts mm -hmm. abound. I've said it several times, and I'm saying it again, that if there are any such people, they don't represent either Mr. President or the party. Mr. President has demonstrated all through this period is on flinching support for Ashwaj Bola Medjinobo. In Lafia, in um, uh, uh, um, the, 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 I think it was the last um, two campaigns where he was, and, this is and I was research. with him mm -hmm. on Saturday, and we were discussing, and of course this matter came out, and he said, it's, it's un even unthinkable for anybody to even think so. That, um, that he will not support his own candidate. Okay. He will not support Shabala Mechinobo. But there are some people out there who want to cause a lot of mischief, create a gulf between the president and the incoming president. Okay. And Inshallah. By the grace of God. Mm. And I can tell you that they don't represent either the party or the government or the APC. Pure and simple. Now, in this conversation, uh, there's another thing that I'm just remembering now, sort of noting on now. Um, you're probably one of the people that know the candidate of APC, Ashwa Ajibola Ahmed Chinobu, very, very well. Uh, you were his chief of staff back in the day. Right. Uh, so this. You worked very, I, I think that's what chief of staffs do. They work very, very closely with their principals. Another chief of staff was Bapadunde uh, Raji Fashola. But going back to your, you were chief of staff before him. Um, if you were to take an assessment of knowing, first of all, the caliber and quality of the man and looking at the field out there, um, when you were then, then to look at his chances. So how, how would you say, are you feeling very, very good that from what I know, I'll, look at, I'll take this question from two perspectives. From what I know of Ashiwaju. My association with Ashiwaju did not start with my being chief of staff. I probably started about 10 years before then, okay. uh, during the SDP and our days. I want that struck me as far back as 1991, Ashiwaju, this sense of loyalty a sense of fairness, and a sense of justice. In 1991, there were three uh, tendencies of SDP in Lagos State. There was the Agbala Jobi, there was the Sarumi, there was the Yomi Edu. And I belong to the Yomi Edu. 
you know, tendency. While I should you belong to the sort of a tendency there. Well, we went for primaries. We came a distant third. That's your middle tendency. But while when we came third, both the Abuela Jobis and the Sarumins wooed us. At the end of the day, we went to join the Sarumis where Ashwaju was for some local political reasons. When a few weeks later, the dead administration nullified and disqualified all the three uh, disqualified both Sarumi and Agwala Jobi. Other people came out to go and cont come and contest. And there were fresh elections. So he said, no. It's only if your maid who says no that anybody can come out from our group. Because when we needed an alliance, he came to us. And that was when I started respecting him. Okay. Now, of course, like you say, the rest is history. We worked together, and he was kind enough to nominate me as chief of staff when he became the governor of Lagos State. And what again struck me was this is a, a man who was prepared for governance from day one. That's why I'm so confident that Nigeria will be very lucky, and Nigeria will witness a rebirth when he becomes president, by the grace of God. Well, people, people in your, in your uh, uh, camp, uh, uh, and that's a difficult word, word when I say camp, I, I mean, people of the per same persuasion uh, uh, as you, I feel that Bola Tinembu is clearly the person to beat. He's clearly the man to beat. Uh, of course, there are other candidates out there, and the way they see it, they, 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 they say it the way any sport citizen, say it the way any sport citizen, and antecedent of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he is the guy to beat. Um, would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. You see, Shabala Ahmed Tinubu was already on the farm before some people set an alarm to wake them up. <laughs> what, what do I mean by this? Is that Swabona Metinubu had prepared for this day more than 20 years ago. People forget very easily. That I beg your pardon, Alaji. I think there's a technical issue, but uh, there's a caller on the line. Uh, Benga is on the line. Benga calling in from Abuja. Uh, good morning, Benga. Yes. Thank you for calling in. Good, good morning, Mr. Ayori. Good morning, the Honorable Minister, who is my neighbor in Abuja here. How are you, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Mi uh, Mr. Minister, you have been very silent these days. You see, the current issue of Okay. Uh, it's uh, interesting. Uh, Maybe Ibenga can get back in yeah. uh, because, you know, you were yeah. just explaining yeah. that yeah. area to me at the top of the program right. Right. when he said you've been very silent these right. days. No, right. I don't know what he, what he means I've been silent or what. So Maybe he can back. get back right. in. He can explain now, himself. What I said, people forget very easily that in 2003, the only part, the only state that survived the tornado of PDP in the AD, in the entire south, Southwest, was Ashwaj Bola That's right. That's right. And from that moment, he started building bridges across Nigeria. Actually, at that time, nobody knew. Nobody what, knew. Maybe very few people knew that you see, he was from, working at something. Exactly. From AD, he became ACD. From ACD, we became AC. From AC, we became ACN. From ACN, we became APC. This was the same gentleman who was propelling and spreading his tentacle to every part of Nigeria. And this is why it is, today is payback time. 
because he had already established structures mm -hmm. all over Nigeria. Okay. And it's one position today that you cannot attach any eth ethnic or religious label, lab label to. Is an all season Nigeria. And this started way back. This is way back 2003. I mean, to, because I was a witness, I was a participant, not just I was a participant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when in Bodilon we started holding meetings. That's his residence, his personal yes. residence. We started holding meetings with all people you never thought he could even work with from all parts of the country. He was supporting and sponsoring candidates in Taraba in Anambra, in uh, Baesa, in Kogi, so he's in Kwara. So he's putting the work. Well, he's I, I, putting I, the work. Yes, and he was putting in everything you know, he had. And this is what is metamorphosing into his obvious success today. I remember that in 2007, sir, 2007, AD had only one stage. That was BRF. If you remember, between 2007 and 2011, we became four. We won three. We first won Edo in court. Then we won Ekiti. Then we won Oshun. And then people began to really reckon with Ashiwaju. A deluge. Let me bring in Ademola. And thank you, Mr. Ademola, for holding on a bit. Mr. Ademola in Ekpadia, good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Yes. And good morning, my own Yori. Yes. Uh, please, the question I have for Nori is this. Well, in 2019, when we were preparing for uh, Mr. President's second term, okay, there was no fresh scarcity, everything was so peaceful. Why is it now that he's preparing to hand over for the incoming government, the, the fresh scarcity and the issue of this uh, uh, Naira currency that is causing havoc as we speak now? There was a ratio this morning at Toyota. You understand? So my concern is people are doubting. By the way, the situation in Ojota, perhaps you also know that, the situation in Ojota, we are told, has, return, has returned to normal. Fine, fine. But what I'm saying is... I hear you. I just wanted to add that. The, the, what I'm saying is the issue of this forest scarcity one mm -hmm. and the issue of this Naira redesign of new currency shouldn't have come up this period when we are very close to election period. That's just my challenge. And that is what people are saying, that the government is not secure with the incoming, incoming uh, uh, the, uh, 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 sorry, APC, the uh, presidential candidate. So that's just my concern. Okay. Yeah, that, doubting the sincerity of this government. They are not supporting pre incoming president, uh, uh, Tinubu, as we expected. Let's, let's hear what so Alaji Lai Mohammed has to uh, say about uh, that. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. I, I wish you had joined this conversation earlier. I'll say something very clearly, very, very clearly. I said it will be suicidal for anybody in this government or in this party in particular, not to support me. That's why I made Tinubu. It will be self-immolation. We will be preparing a ground for what we call a, house, a hostile takeover. Okay. So, look, and this a is... A hostile takeover cannot come from within APC. No way. It you comes see, from... What, what I'm saying is that if we do not... If APC does not succeed itself, Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Chinubu does not become the president of this country. And we will, by the grace of God. The biggest loser will be all of us in APC. So it's not in our interest to put blocks, okay. stubble blocks, on the way. Okay. And I'm glad to say that in the respect of the first situation, it's easing, it's easing up. But on the issue of the Naira, Mr. President has spoken on that. And I have no further comments. But I, I, I want to imagine. say again, mm -hmm. it is not in our own interest or anybody whatsoever to put stumbling blocks on the road of Ashwaj uh, Oh, Just by the way, you, you, uh, as you said, the fuel situation, you say, is easing, easing up. Is yeah. easing up. Uh, but the point he was saying is, why, did it, why, why was it allowed to happen? No, no, it, it, it was seen as part of the whole... Uh, no, no, it, it's a very it, difficult it, aspect. It, it, speaking it, it, Mr. Polari, yes. I've just... And this is common sense with due respect. 
You see, if God forbid, if another party today to take over from APC, who will be the first victims? To be us. Um, make no mistake about it. It will be everybody. So I, I, don't, I don't think I need to stress that point further. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yakub in uh, Dokwemu, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, Jibiori, good morning, sir. And uh, good morning to Honorable Minister. Uh, we, we do respect, sir. Uh, let me begin by saying this. Some of us that support uh, this government, I can tell you for fact, we did not support this government. I always say this, if you can bear me that witness. We are not supporting this government because we need anything rather than good governance. And then as the right scholar and the left scholar rightly says, uh, we do respect to, uh, to you, sir, Honorable Minister. I can say that you talk, to, you talk for yourself. Sir, don't talk for any other person within that cabinet. Why am I saying that? Let's tell ourselves the truth. They made this very particular time uneasy for some of us by fans of agenda of this very particular government to be free. Now, in 2019, if Mr. President wants to redesign this matter, why can't he do it at that time? Let me tell you the, for the fact. Well, Alaji has said that he's not going to comment on the Naira matter. In fairness to him, the president has spoken. There's nothing more for him to add. I beg your pardon. Uh, it, it, you see, Mr. Fulani, honestly, it boils down to what I've said. It's a conspiracy theory. And what is the point of an operation being successful and the patient dying? Well, what's going to happen to us if Ashwabala Metunibu loses this election? I speak for the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I speak for the press, including the president, and I can tell you without mincing words that there's no division within the government. Well, uh, uh, I don't, with, I, I, with, look, with, with due look, regard, the sir. perception out there yeah. is different from, I'm talk, from talk, reality. I'm talking about reality. Okay. I, because uh, that, that guy, that gentleman, Ayakub said, sir, please. You can speak for yourself. Look, what he's alluding to there look, is that we look, see that there seem to be enemies within. Mr. Fulani, I'm saying this with all sense of okay. responsibility okay. that the government of Nigeria that I speak for mm -hmm. and the party that I belong to, we are united okay. behind and this we have project resolved that we have no other option than the support. candidate supporting oh, the candidate oh, oh, of yes. the party. And we've done this, we have manifested this in many ways. Okay. Okay. One, I told you about the president said, going out to campaign for Mr. For, 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 the, for the candidate. I told you about him going out to say this is my successor. And I know a few other things that I'm not at liberty, at liberty to discuss here. But make no about it. There are a lot of conspiracy theories over there. So there was, but the truth is what I'm telling you. Okay. That this president and this government is suddenly behind all our material. All right, then. Let's take a break now. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Continue the conversation with Elijah Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information. And, of course, we'll continue taking your calls as well. This Sunday, the freedom of movement is a fundamental human right. But when the right is taken away, what happens? This is the story of survivors trafficked from Nigeria to Libya and other parts of the world. Senior correspondent Sharon Ejasson exposes the roots and tricks used by traffickers to lure young girls and boys into perpetual slavery. She told me that you'll do prostitution. I said, prostitution, even though I can't do prostitution in my country, this is a country I don't even know anything about. I said, I can't do that. In this touching story, survivors of irregular migration share the gripping tales of how their dream of a bright future transformed into a dark world of fantasy. Nigerian embassy told me to go back to where I'm coming from. It is an organized crime where perpetrators escape prosecution 
the society keeps mute and the social media fool it to become a big business. Watch this investigative piece exposing the realities of human trafficking. That's on Sunday specials where great stories live. Every major news story is with Benny Perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live for the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Honorable Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, uh, of the APC-led administration. That's why, you know, he's here. Because, and he said that they intend to keep it that way, God willing, at the polls, sure. so that this APC administration shall be succeeded by another APC winner. Absolutely. Okay, uh, but um, uh, Benga in Abuja, I'm happy to hear that you called back. Uh, please go ahead now. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Yori. Uh, the only minister, I know you are professional in public relations, and um, you have been a public image maker, and we commended you for it, right from the formation of APC up to this time. But I want to ask, do you, don't you know that this, uh, this, uh, the, 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 the permutation of this policy of Naira swap and Naira the design has really demarcated APC and your candidate? All the burning of fire killing all over Nigeria. The opposition are clapping for, uh, for Buhari because they know that it's in their favor. And they're using it to demarcate APC. Okay. So whenever anybody say that they're, 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 the government is supporting APC, that's right there. People are, no, people are getting this grown through, and they are losing interest in APC and the candidate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Benga calling in from Abuja. Um, even though the minister has said that he's not really going to say anything on top of what the president has said, uh, he's, he said all that needs to be said about it. But let me look to the question of demarketing, because that must be a dangerous uh, concept uh, in the quest that you are all in in APC. Um, uh, what, what can you say to that, the demarketing of, the allegation of the, demar of the demarketing of the APC candidate? You, you see, Mr. <clears throat> President, in his speech yesterday, which I listened to, expressed concern about the hardship Nigerians are going through as a result of this redesign. Also assured the Nigerians that this pain will be short-lived. As to the effect of this uh, redesigning of the banknotes, mm -hmm. the social effect of it, social effect and the political effect of it, mm. I think we are not unmindful of it. But what we are saying is that that was not the intention okay. and that it could not be the intention. Okay. Okay. Why will I, as a government that is living, create orders for who is going to succeed me? Does it make sense? Well, it doesn't. It, exactly. It, it, it doesn't and this is the really. way I think we should, look, we should look at it. And that is the way it is that we are looking at it. Because, like I keep saying again, you don't have as much to lose as I have. If APC does not succeed itself, Indeed. so why would I then? So it's, it's, it's a matter of people a, not understanding, a, it's even you know, from my own what's going enlightened on. Enlightened self-interest. Okay. Okay. For presidents, enlightened self-interest. For the greedy. Yeah. Number one is that uh, I believe the minister is a is a lawyer by profession, even though he's a minister of information, or he's a law, he's a lawyer. 
I know, I, I saw in TV once, he's a lawyer. How can, what, 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 is, what is his comment on the judgment of Supreme Court concerning this NERA note design? The Supreme Court say status quo should remain that till 22nd of February, before they make their own judgment available to all. Why did the president go against the Supreme Court judgment? That is number one question. Number two, why is he, since he said that he's a chief of staff to Bola Metinibu, what is he doing? Not following Bola Metinibu in everywhere. The speaker is the number three man in the country, but he leaves his job following the Bola Metinibu everywhere. The Ahmed Lawa is number two man in the country following, because we know the president said that the vice president and, and boss Mustafa, they are the ones to work for government. Why is he, even if he's saying that he's attending to this image, whatever, in the Ministry of uh, Information, the FAMSEC can do that, even if he's not around. Number, that is number two question. Number three question, why is the policy now? Why now? Why are they targeting the policy now? Why are they doing it now if they don't have the intention? As he's saying that uh, it's, a, it's a conspiracy theory. So maybe something is cooking somewhere. Why now? <laughs> that is our own question. Why are they doing it now? Maybe something why is cooking. Why did they do it yeah, Okay. Why didn't they do it in 2019? Why now? Let him answer it. Yeah, yeah okay. Thank you very much. Thank um, you, Mr. Mohammed. First of all, I think the general of the Federation. Okay. Two, you said our chief of staff, Bola Tinobu, where I am, where am I in his campaign? And that is not okay. the two. That's the one I wanted yes. you to really. Yes. I knew. And you I would say, to. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, I do not know at which point you joined this conversation. If you join this conversation at the beginning, I made it clear that not only have I been physically present in at least about five or six you know, campaigns in Lafia, in Katsina, in uh, Ilori, in Lagos, and even yesterday in Ibadan, but that have devoted the last three months from October 8 to creating a platform okay. Where every minister of this administration comes to give his scorecard. And that is another form of campaign. Because if you are coming from the opposition, you can tell the world what you are going to do to, so that they can vote you in. But if you are being in power, you must tell them what you have done. Right. And what I've organized, and I say with pride and gratitude to God, that 25 ministers have given their account of stewardship on this platform, and this has gone a long way to debunk the notion that this government, this party, has nothing to campaign with. No, okay. Thank you. I, 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 now, the third one, I think he asked about why now, why now, and I think he gave Mr. Mohammed had been listening, he had joined us earlier, and said, the coincidence might look, you know, fishy or suspicious. To sabotage but I, I yeah, Bola of, uh, Bola Look, if So that if, is not... If there's, if, a, I, this is, if there's a hostile takeover, I wonder by a hostile takeover. If any party, apart from APC comes, it's a hostile takeover. You know what happens in the hostile takeover? The first place they behead at the head at the heads of the former uh, uh, the, uh, corporation. They will not go to Mr. Mohammed there. They'll come to me. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I mean, honestly. So no matter what, what no matter what, what it no looks matter, like exactly, no to matter those people what out it there, looks like, you are saying that, that no. people and that is why know up till that today, no. we will continue to work to the last minute to ensure Ashwad Bala Metrubu is elected president of the federal government. And by the grace of God, before the end of this month, We'll all be celebrating and jubilating. Okay. Honorable Shagun Oluladi, uh, thank you very much for holding on. This time, you're reaching us from Ibadan. Uh, good morning yes. to you, sir. What are you doing in Ibadan, may I ask? Yeah, we just had our campaign yesterday in Ibadan, and I'm, I'm there now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, just to come back to uh, uh, Lagos, to Abuja. All we say now is that, I want to ask a question, Honorable Minister. Sir. Good morning, sir. Morning. Good I morning. want to ask you. Uh, let's leave Ashwari Bala Met in the of this. Let us face the reality. Number one question I would like to find out from you is that 
is there any uh, plan on ground for interim government? This is not to sabotage Tinubu, but to sabotage Nigeria. Number two is the monetary uh, policy that uh, uh, Mr. President is pursuing with the NFL. Why is it now? Because in 2019, the vice president was saying, distributing money all over the country on the on the platform of uh, issue of uh, uh, money, federal money, and also and so on and so forth. So for me, if there is no conspiracy theory as we want to believe, there is none. Okay. The issue here is that is it is it clear that this. Uh, policies are targeted to the market, not only the as well as the but also Mr. President himself. Okay, Honourable Oluladi, uh, uh, Honourable Oluladi, just in case anybody forgot, you are a member, first of all, you're a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, you are a member of uh, APC, but you still have these concerns. I just wanted to put that in perspective for Alaiji like too. I don't say, Honourable Oluladi, I'm, I'm glad I'm speaking to you. And I, th I hope you have been following this conversation. Number one, what would the president benefit from not supporting Ashwabala Ahmed Tinubu? What would the party benefit from not supporting Ashwabala Ahmed Tinubu? What will I benefit from not supporting Ashwabala Ahmed Tinubu? To the first question, what would the president benefit? from, you know, as you said. You know, there are those who are saying that, well, Mr. President simply is not interested. He, he, you know, he's always he, said, he, vote for whoever you want. Just you go see, there and you, vote you see, Mr. Fulani, Mr. President wears two caps. One, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Second cap, leader of APC. Okay. When Mr. President is addressing Nigerians, he has no choice than to tell them to self vote for the candidate of your choice. The so president cannot, as president of Nigeria, say you must vote for APC. If he does that, it means he's only president of APC. Well, but he's, he's saying it now no. in the campaign no. season. No. But when he goes to the rostrum okay. at the appropriate platform, he puts on, when he puts on the cap of leader of the party, he says, this is my successor. Yes, he has said that. But so, so people have so, to understand that. Yes, I, I, so they I, have to understand I, I, the, sure, the dual role. I'm sure they do, but they are being mischievous. <laughs> Mr. With, George, with due respect. good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and good morning to the Honorable Minister. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uncle Yori, there is a saying that action speaks louder than words. What? The Honorable Minister is saying right there does not seem to tally with the actions that we are seeing. That is why you see people calling and repeating the same question because they are not getting answers to the real question. Now, uh, the Minister said he has attended this rally. I've seen him only on two, the one in Nasarawa and the one in Kwara. He is from Kwara. And we expected him to be in the forefront. But he's not. I remember at that Quara rally, he just showed him for about 10 seconds. He did not say anything. <laughs> what do you read to that? Now, Uncle Yori, uh, uh, Alain Lai Mohammed is the Minister of Information. Under his watch, 98% of the media houses in Nigeria are attacking people against the ethics of the profession. They are attacking the person. We are not seeing sanctions against them. Oh, oh, if, if you were in my position as, as a political watcher, what would you believe? What would you, what would you say? We are aware that this uh, uh, same uh, president was to contest in 2019, the National Assembly presented the amended electoral act before him, before the election came up. He didn't sign it because he knew the implications it will have on his election. But 
when the successor is about to come, we are seeing Naira change. We are seeing all sorts of, you know... Fewer uh, scarcity. Bureaucratic things that we put impediments on the way. Okay, Mr. So George, I think you, you, enough said. Uh, thank you, sir, for calling in. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. George. I'm, I'm, I, I beg to say that you are wrong on all fronts. Number one, I was not in Quara State for 10, for 10 seconds. No, 10 no, no. He's yeah, it's, it's probably talking about the, the, the television cut. I, it's not even there because I was right in front with the president, okay. with so Ashwaju. And I was at the airport to receive Ashwaju. Okay. And I was so there it's not days before. Okay. Because the people you saw there that were mobilized, they did not come or jump from, uh, from, 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 from the trees. Two, Mr. George, I was in Katsina. Mr. George, I was in Lagos Rally. Mr. George, I was in Ibadan yesterday. Yes. So, is it, is, it, is it mischief that no, you... Were... I, I, I wouldn't know. No, some because... Of the others, because don't mind, be honest. Be, but, because it keeps but, on coming up. No, that, you see, Alaji, where have you, you been? See, and then I went back again to say, at the beginning of this matter, no administration has done what I have done, okay. as much of information and culture, to create a platform. Okay, the scorecard. Scorecard. Platform. None. To campaign for my party. I'm going to campaign for my party, what am I campaigning for? Uh, I it, you. Yes, but it wasn't understood. It was thought that, as you said, scorecard, eight years of President Muhammadu Buhari, that's one thing. Uh, Project Tinubu is another thing. They are inseparable. Mr. Mr. Polani, it's one thing if Ashwaj Balamatibu was contesting on an independent platform. Which is not. Which is not available. It's a different thing if he was coming in from another party, say Labour, then he can now base his campaign on what he's going to do. But if your party has spent eight years in power, and you cannot tell me what they have done, mm -hmm. why should I vote for you? Okay. So what I've been doing is equivalent to. of political rally, and I've done 25 of them. And this effectively, and effectively. should be seen yes. as campaigning for Bola Ahmed. Absolutely. Let me, no, 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 let me uh, just ask the last uh, question. Uh, okay. You uh, said 98% of the media houses are against Bola Ahmed. What have I done? Well, Wait a minute. I'm a minister I'm, I'm of information and culture. And I think when we talk about the media, you have the private media, which is probably 80% of the media we have today in Nigeria. You have the social media. And I want in trying to curtail, you know, fake news. Okay. What I have done in trying to curtail fake news, what I have done in trying to return sanity into the media. Uh, uh, into the media um, space. space. But if I have missed some information, and 98% of the media is against APC, or by, they, are against, but they are against me. And where is Mr. George? When, for the last eight years, I've been fighting against fake news, I've been fighting against disinformation, I've been fighting against a speech to the extent that I started an advocacy against fake news. Okay. Mr. Joshua in Ogun State. Good morning, sir. Oh, okay. Uncle Yori, good morning. How thank are you? you? Very well, thank I you. I greet the, you know, the... You understand with the people. You are a strategist. Of course, you have to put forward the scorecard of the administration. That's a good one. The area I want to privilege us asking to look at is that he's concentrating too much on Asso Rock. This policy is coming from CBN. CBN a governor, is a governor, is a governor. CBN now, guy, but the guy they suffer us, and we right now inside us or yeah, while I do so, Oga, uh, everybody should be vigilant. I will just finally say, Nigerians, please don't let us riot. If they want us to fight, it is to bring in interim government. 
Don't let us fight. All right, let then. Us be patient. Thank you Thank very you, much, sir. Mr. Joshua, calling in from Irewali. That's the one thing we missed out. This whole charge, uh, fifth columnist, whoever, uh, they, there's a whole, there's a grand design to uh, make us end up with an interim uh, government. You, maybe you have any comment on that before we close? Mr. Polari, there will be no interim government. Mr. Polari, as well as I met Tinubu, we will win this election. Mr. Polari, APC will succeed itself. And there is no clear indication that there will be no interim government, and we have no intention of staying one day extra. And the fact that we have already considered a transition committee. That's right. That's right. And that Mr. committee, President has done by the grace of God, will hand over to the APC candidate. No matter the conspiracy theories all around. Exactly. The polls, mm -hmm. because we are working to win at the polls. The presidential candidate is everywhere. He has campaigned more than any other candidate. That is a fact. The government is certainly behind him. We're going to have to leave it there, Elijah. Thank, thank you very thank much. You very much for coming thank along. You. Hopefully a lot of uh, minds have been disabused of some of the notions that they carried before. Uh, thank you as always, and I certainly wish you all the best. So that's our program today. We don't do Saturday, so the next program is on Monday. Uh, do have a great weekend, and see you on Monday. This Sunday.